Welcome to Dawes Geek. What you see here is MX19.1 Advanced Hardware Support Edition. So what this is doing is it's taking MX and it is bringing in the latest kernel, the latest Mesa drivers so that you can run MX Linux based on Debian with the latest and greatest hardware out there. You can see all these beautiful tools built in with the MX Tools screen here. You can see we've got all these amazing options right from the install. As soon as you finish the install, you get all of this beautiful stuff you're seeing, and you're just gonna see me set up a bunch of programs. I'm literally setting this up on my Ryzen 9 3900 X. Sing to me. Oh, you want more? Fine, 64 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. Oh, you want more than that? I can give it to you a Radeon 7. Radeon 7, 7 nanometer GPU. Ooh, it sounded so sweet in here right now on a prestige X570 creation motherboard all running on Debian, on a Debian base, Debian. Now there's this thing that is in the Linux world in which, you know, Linux is kind of this old hardware revitalization tool that people think about. But this can't be because it runs on all, almost every single supercomputer out there. It has the capabilities to do all of this incredible gaming. So why do we have distributions out there that can't run the latest hardware out there? That takes six months or longer to release a hardware enablement stack so that you can use the latest Ryzen laptop. You can use the latest Wacom tablet or your latest Logitech keyboard in it. It's not acceptable. And thankfully, MX heard my cry, and they created the Advanced Hardware Support Edition. You want your LTS? Go with straight MX, or go with straight Debian, or go with Ubuntu. You want Advanced Hardware Support? Download the Advanced Hardware Support ISO that Dolphin created out here, and boom, baby! You're rocking with your latest hardware right here, and there are so many packages available for Debian. It's insane, which makes it, as you can see here, I'm able to quickly set up everything including Lightworks, although I will mention with Lightworks, I did have to install the beta version because the standard version was missing some dependency it didn't have. So what when I downloaded the beta version, it works fine. In fact, I edited this whole video in it. But the point is, I've loved MX for many years, but I've not been able to really run it because I don't want to sit there and manually try to pull down different kernel versions and manually pull down the Mesa and all that. If I'm going to do that, I'm just going to run Arch, which is where I've been most of this time. But now with the advanced hardware support, I had to try this out on bare metal and I'm absolutely in love. Now there are some paper cuts, like with app images, for instance. This doesn't work right out of the box because MX Linux uses something called sysvnit instead of systemd. And apparently, as I understand it, I could be wrong. Let me know in the comments below. I believe it requires systemd snaps to, so you can't run snaps. And app images is missing something. Well, I'll show you the configuration file that Dolphin gave me that allowed me to get app images to work. And I believe he's going to be fixing that in future editions of MX. But the reality is there are so many Debian packages and flat packs is in the MX package installer as well that you may not run into any of the programs you need out there that you won't be able to get not utilizing some of these universal packages. But app images, you know, that's a must. You gotta get that working. And I think it makes you switch to system D by default. I know there's people out there that don't like system D for whatever reason, because people whine about everything, but it's the standard right now. It's where everybody should be. So I think that should be the default and maybe have the sys V in it as your secondary option. Now, for those that have to have snaps, just know that when you're booting MX, you do have an option to boot right there into a system D version. I'm just saying that should be the default version. You've got everything here in MX. You've got Conky already set up. You can see we got that clock hanging out there over to the right. It's really not centered with my screen, this 2K screen that I have here. Did I mentioned I have a 2K screen. No, I've got two 2K screens, baby. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in here into the config file in Conky and just, we're gonna get this alignment to the top left. And it was able to figure that out. Nobody puts baby in the corner, but you certainly can put the clock in the corner and that's no problem at all. We're also gonna show you some gaming in here because we've got the latest, greatest hardware here. We need to show you some of the gaming and capabilities. This is an XFCE desktop, by the way. So you get all the cool things in XFCE desktop like 
being able to use F4 to do a drop down terminal, all these different shortcut keys here and things that you can use. Boom, you got a drop down terminal, making it really easy to get into your shell. Of course, I installed Fish because I love Fish, the interactive shell. So you're really seeing me set up a complete desktop from scratch. This is what I do. Now, what I'm doing here is you're going to see me move this comp file that uh, Dolphin gave me into my Etsy sysctl.d directory. And that is going to allow, once we reboot, me to utilize app images. Now I'm gonna open up this 99-sandbox.conf file that we moved into the sysctl.d directory so that you can see what it's doing in here and interpret it and create it on your own if you want and move it into that directory so that you can run app images as well. So it does some type of kernel.unprivileged underscore user ns underscore clone equals one. I have no idea what that's actually accomplishing, but apparently allows app images to work. If you know, let me know in the comments below. I think it's interesting, but again, I think Dolphin will probably get that fixed if possible in future version of MX where you won't have to do that in order to run app images, which would be very welcome. That was one of the paper cuts that I ran into along with not having snap support. And you could see once I rebooted, boom, Joplin works, the app image works. Now I can set up all my notes and be good to go. And look, magically, through the power of editing, we are now in Plasma on MX advanced hardware support. How can this be? Well, because MX is so awesome that in their package installer, if you didn't notice in some of the previous screens, there was an option for you to install different desktop environments as well. And in this one, MX package installer is all you need to go to. And there you go, boom, baby. You've got Budgie, Gnome, Plasma, LXDE, and Mate right at your fingertips. Love it. All right, so now I'm gonna show you some gaming. You can see the performance that we're getting here. Now, you gotta keep in mind, we're recording with OBS as well, so the frame rate's even better when you're not taking up resources recording through OBS. That's how things work. So generally between 15 and 30 frames per second improvement when not utilizing OBS, but this is insane. How do you like these apples, console gamers? I'm a console gamer too. I just wanted to troll you a little bit at the 60 frame per second goal you all have. So we're running well over 200 frames per second in CSGO on a 2K monitor. Really fantastic performance. Compared to Arch or Solus or other things that are more geared towards gaming, you know, you, it's within spitting distance, right? You, you might be getting 10, 15 more frames per second in a pure Arch, which I've been running all the way up to this point or a Solus, which you know has the latest and greatest kernels and Mesa drivers and things. But uh, you know, not nothing that you're gonna be going, oh my gosh, I'm dying all the time because I lost another 10 frames per second when I'm already over 220. You'll be fine. And of course, I'm also gonna show you a much more modern game out there, Doom 2016 in MX as well, because I think that will show the case of just how powerful MX is now with this advanced hardware support as a gaming platform in Steam. So we're gonna run it at 2K on all high settings. And of course, again, we're recording with OBS and you can see uh, more frames per second than even this. This is utilizing Vulkan, which is not installed by default. So you will need to go and do sudo apt install Mesa Vulkan drivers One, there. It's Mesa-Vulkan-drivers. You can also install Lutris as well if you like, but look, we're well over the 60 frames per second here. We're doing really well in our 2K environment here utilizing Vulkan. It's just absolutely gorgeous. And my gameplay is professional level. Uh, do not leave your comments below uh, regarding that remark. I don't need to know I'm a fast player. I already know it, okay? People don't need to tell me anymore. I know I don't know how to play. I try my best. In any case, look at this amazing you gotta love it. All right, so you've seen the gaming. So let's talk about the great install process. You have a clean cut grub installation selection option. For those that don't know, 
Grub allows you to dual boot. So if you have Windows and you want to install MX with it, Grub is what you will boot to first and you'll choose whether you want to go into Windows or into say MX Linux. And in this case, because it has a whole separate part in its installation screen saying, where do you want to put Grub? You don't have to worry about messing up your boot order of everything else where a lot of distros hide that or they want you to manually set it. It's just, hey, do you want to install Grub? And if so, where? It's beautiful. I love it. One of my favorite features of the installation ever. It's easy to install Codex. You've got the MX Package Manager. You have advanced hardware support. You have some paper cuts like app images and snaps that need to be resolved, I think, in the future. You can change your desktop environment easily through the MX Package Installer. You've got a ton of fantastic recommended packages. You've got a beautiful welcome screen. And did I mention the printer the HP LaserJet M251NW, which would work with any distro out there, period. But for some reason, doesn't always work with every distro or it's a pain in the butt to get it to work through cups in MX. No problem. The setup was pure perfection. It found it immediately, installed it, zero issues. You'll need to install things like your Mesa Vulcan drivers if you want to do gaming, but you can see the performance out there in gaming was absolutely amazing. I love everything that they're doing here with the advanced hardware support in MX. I love all of the MX tools out there to let you do things like change your boot options of your boot order. All of these great MX tools available that you can just easily go through and set up in your initial install. This is just the right direction to go with the distro. Now I'm going to be doing a collaboration because there are really three distros that I absolutely adore right now for me. And that is Arch based distros, which I've done plenty of videos on. There is MX Linux, which I absolutely love and now can utilize things through the advanced hardware support. And then there's Solus, which is also a amazing project with a lot of great talented people on a rolling distro. And one of my patrons is actually testing out Solus on all of their latest hardware. And we're probably gonna do a collab on that in the near future, so be looking out for that as well. As with any of these distros, there's a ton of work that goes into them. So consider supporting, if you utilize MX, that distro. Consider giving some donations, consider volunteering for it. This is something that we need desperately in the Linux community for all this free and open source software. Let me know in the comments below what you think of MX. And until next time, get out there and fill your brains. Don't forget to subscribe! And thank you for watching this video.